Good evening. We begin with massive changes to BC's Family Law Act. New legislation introduced today is putting children first. Now the move comes nearly five years after Peter Lee murdered his wife, her parents and his six-year-old son in an upscale Oak Bay neighborhood. Lessons have been learned and now the hope is to see the new laws prevent similar tragedies. Kylie Stanton has the story. Bodies are removed one after another as police investigate an unthinkable crime. Early September 2007, Peter Lee murders his six-year-old son, estranged wife and her parents before stabbing himself to death. I am very pleased to introduce the Family Law Act. Now steps are being taken to prevent this from happening again. I completely uh, believe that this legislation has the potential to save lives. The provincial government is introducing sweeping changes nearly five years in the making, meant to overhaul current legislation, admittedly aging and out of date. Family Relations Act is a 30-year-old bill, um, dates back to 1978. The Lieutenant Governor transmits here with Bill Number 16, Intentional Family Law Act. The updated legislation puts the best interest of the child at the forefront, making it the only consideration in parental disputes. Well, that sounds uh, rather simplistic. It is really a profound shift in the way that uh, cases and, and disputes will be looked at. Many changes are a direct result of this tragedy, where warning signs were clear. And he goes, I'm sorry, Sonny. In this interview, Sonny Park tells police her husband was trying to kill her when he drove his Land Rover into a utility pole. Despite police voicing concerns to the Crown, Lee was released on bail. Weeks later, the crime unfolds. A report on the murder-suicide concluded the system failed the boy. Recommendations to define family violence and introduce protection orders with harsh penalties under the criminal code are now moving forward. The hope is that this will help improve law enforcement response and also uh, send a really strong signal that breaching protection orders um, will result in, in fairly significant sanctions. It's what could have saved the lives of Sunny Park, her parents and son. With lessons learned and changes made, there's hope others can be saved. Now, the existing Family Relations Act was introduced in 1978, and some of the changes introduced today reflect a more modern take on B.C. families. The CBC's Stephen Smart joins us now live from the B.C. Legislature. Stephen, do these changes reflect the needs of a family in B.C. in 2011? Yeah, I, th I think so. Um, you know, we haven't seen uh, all of the details of the legislation. Uh, and this is a, a huge bill, Stacey. Um, we were up in the minister's office to talk to her about it uh, a couple of hours ago, and she had a copy of it sitting on her table. And I'm, I'm not kidding you, it was, it was yay thick. This is uh, a lot of changes being introduced. But yeah, the, the idea is that uh, the, the last legislation, uh, the legislation, I should say, hasn't been changed since 1978. Obviously, families in B.C. are looking very different now than they were in 1978. Uh, the rise in common law relationships, for instance, uh, single parents, um, same sex parents, all sorts of, of, of other um, types of families that we now consider families that, that weren't even really contemplated then. Yeah, so you mentioned the common law families. Um, uh, what we've been hearing is that it's going to deal a bit with separating assets uh, in a common law relationship, which is something new. Yeah, there, there's a couple of different factors there, Stacey. Uh, one of them, um, and I think a lot of people didn't realize this, is that in your, if you're in a common law relationship, it could be a 20-year-long relationship, which is you know, essentially like a marriage. Um, if that relationship ends, uh, the assets weren't necessarily split 50-50 like they would have been in a marriage. This uh, new act will actually uh, sort of put some concrete rules in place about when assets like a, a house or, or a car or anything like that actually get split when they don't. Um, conversely, um, with, with an actual marriage, um, there are some new rules that are going to come into place as to what gets split and what doesn't. For instance, an inheritance. If, if, one, uh, if one part of one member of the, uh, of the couple um, receives an inheritance that not, doesn't necessarily go to the other member if, if, um, if the relationship splits up. So lots of little things like that. Um, as well, um, there's a, a big emphasis on taking a lot of these family law cases out of the courts. Uh, if you go over to uh, Supreme Court in Victoria and look at the court registry, um, about a quarter, each day, about a quarter of the cases in there um, that are being non-criminal cases are family law cases. That's incredibly expensive. It sets up a very adversarial system. 
Um, and so they, what they want to do is put in place more mediation, more arbitration, other sort of dispute resolution methods like that that keep these cases out of court. Really, bottom line is modernizing, uh, modernizing a system. Families have changed drastically since 1978 and, and the law should reflect that. So that's right. what they hope they're getting at here. All right. Uh, we look forward to learning more about this, uh, this massive, massive new law. Thanks so much. Stephen Smart reporting live for us from the B.C. Legislature.